In Business Central, we can use account schedules to create financial reports in a very customizable way. Account schedules are particularly useful for performing calculations that cannot be made in the chart of accounts without having to go into development or using the report designer. We can get to the page by searching for account schedule in our find for page and selecting the relevant option. This opens the account schedules page. We're able to make as many schedules as we want, each with a unique name. You can see a number of account schedule names have been set up for this demo database. We can, for example, create account schedules to calculate profit margins on dimensions like departments or the size of our customers. And we can also create account schedules with the chart of accounts, as we mentioned earlier. And we can also use them with the chart of cost types and chart of cash flow accounts. We're also able to make use of cost types and cash flow entry accounts to report on cost accounting and cash flow. With account schedules, we're able to set up different report layouts to print these reports, as well as export this data to Excel. Now, when setting up an account schedule, the first thing we need to do is specify the name in this name field. What we'll do is create a new entry and create our new account schedule. We can elaborate in our description. The default column layout field is used to specify a column layout that we would like to use for this account schedule. We'll come back to this a little later. The analysis view name field is the name of the analysis view that we want to base the account schedule on. If we specify an analysis view on the account schedule, we can use the dimensions assigned to the analysis view on the account schedule's lines. If not, we then only have our global dimensions available. Again, we'll return to this uh, later. With this set up, the account schedule, we can go to process and edit account schedule, and we can start looking at editing the lines or populating them. So to begin, we'll enter a title line, revenue report. Further down the page, you can see a number of fields to do with formatting the line, bold, italic, and so on. We'll make use of bold for our title, and you can see that the description has updated. We'll skip a couple of lines and begin entering our row numbers. Row numbers can be used in formulas if we'd like a list of a, a number of accounts and total them up. Row numbers can uh, help us to do this. We can enter any value in here that we like for totaling. For now though, we'll stick with the numbering and naming convention of RE100 for our first line. Our description here can be retail sales domestic. We can also specify a totaling type. We have posting accounts, which we can use to specify one or more accounts. We have total accounts for a total or adding a total account. We can also add formulas and make use of some options for cost accounting and cash flow and so on. For now, we'll select posting accounts and use the totaling field to select our accounts. We click the assist edit here and that opens up our GL account list. From here, as we're using uh, sales and we're looking at our retail domestic sales, we'll make use of this particular account. If we wish, we can select multiple accounts and add them in and they will be formatted appropriately in the totaling field. But for now, we'll stick to just our domestic sales for retail. At hitting OK, you can see that that's automatically populated the totaling field. Our next field to look at is our row type. Our options available here are net change, balance at date, and beginning balance. We'll make use of net change for now. We also have the amount type field where we can specify whether we'd like to make use of the net amount figures, the credit amount, or debit amount. We can also specify a opposite sign too. This is particularly useful as if we're dealing with sales, our amounts will be posted as credit amounts with a negative symbol. This may be confusing for others and we can specify Business Central show the opposite sign to make this easier to read. We can also specify whether we would like to make this line visible or not. Our options available here are yes, no, if the amount is not zero or based on whether the line has positive or negative values. For now, we'll leave this as yes. If we make use of dimensions with our account schedules, we can add them using the personalized function at the top here with the cog. 
and adding the relevant fields as we need to. For now, we'll not be looking at that in this particular demonstration, so we'll move on. With this line set up, we can then look at specifying further fields and lines in the account schedule. I have actually made one earlier with that as a basis. If we go to process and edit account schedule, you can see what has been done. I have three lines that make use of their relevant accounts, retail sales domestic, EU and international, and their G corresponding GL accounts. Looking at the totaling type for the final field that we have here, I'll be selecting formula and I'll be marking this down as total retail sales. And with this formula, what I'll do is I'll specify RE100 to RE800. And what this will do is take our row numbers RE100 up to RE800. Whilst it's not specified, it allows for adding more lines in the future if necessary. And we'll total them within this final line. I've applied a RE200 and 300 to these other two lines which means that they'll all be covered within the range that I've specified here. I'll also add a bold and an underline just to really emphasize that it is a total for the end of this particular account schedule. With this setup, we can now look at specifying and creating column layouts to help us display this data in a much more easy to read fashion.